Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the great I Am, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sitkanu, El Shaddai, El Elyon. Our names of all the way that you have shown up in our lives. The different names that express how consistent you are. So Lord, as we approach this throne, forgive us for not trusting. Forgive us for not bearing down on the promises that are written in the Bible. Forgive us for not bearing down on the character of Jesus Christ. Forgive us for not bearing down on the knowledge of love you have for us. Forgive us, Lord. Set us up and teach us how to approach your throne of grace. Teach us how to approach you as we bow down to the feet of this almighty God. A God that chose to be personal with us. So we ask that you have your way because right now there's nothing for you to prove. Because I have so many reasons. We have so many reasons. There are so many reasons. So Lord, we ask that you continue to have your way. Touch the man of God to speak a word, not just in season, but I'll take us through the various seasons of our lives. So we ask that you have your way. We submit the rest of the service to you and say thank you for your presence. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen and amen. Woo! Amen, amen. Right. Now you have that every Sunday. We have that every that's, Sunday. That he's Christian that, at your I'm church. Just, I'm just telling you, we have that worship every single Sunday. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for allowing to come and bless the members of CCC, the, the staff. And once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a special guest today, Reverend Scott Jackson, all the way from Knoxville, Tennessee. You said it's cold up here. Doesn't it get cold in Knoxville? It gets a little, we, we do have uh, days where it's um, 32 degrees. But not this 19, 15? No, no, not this, not this. Well, we, we do. It, it, it occasionally, it gets a little, little chilly. And you're up in the Smokies. On Rocky Top, right? you know, in the Smoky <laughs> Mountains. Yes, you yes, know, yes. But, man, Pastor, it is so good to be with you this morning. Oh, I'm excited. I'm telling I'm you, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than here in, in the church that America comes to. Amen. Um, Amen. The Christian Cultural <laughs> Center. And like what a that. great place yes. to be uh, this morning in God's house here. Yes. Um, and to be able to take God's word and apply it into our hearts today because I believe God has a message for us this morning on the presence of God. Amen. I'm excited because this uh, whole idea of presence is revolutionizing the way that we start to approach God. That's right. Right? That's and right. And uh, even hearing the comments from Dr. Bernard, you know, from, from the, when Dr. Bernard has spoken about his presence and saying, you know, just really willing to be transparent, right? Mm -hmm. So there's one thing about we're wanting the presence of God, but the tension there that we deal with is the transparency That's right. that we That's right. have mm -hmm. while we're in the presence of God, right? So it's the presence of God is one thing, then really being transparent. And, it, and it's not that God doesn't see. God loves the fact that we trust him so much so, right? That's why the song is so key, that we trust him so much so that we're willing to be transparent, knowing mm. that he's going to love every aspect that he sees, that we allow him to see. And the most important thing is, who are we being transparent before? Yes. Is it a God or is it Yahweh? Mm. And that's what, that's what I want us to really grab hold of this morning uh, because we all need a burning bush experience. And I'm putting my seatbelt on now. And I'm telling you, it's, it's time on. to strap it in. <laughs> yes. and, um, and I just want to welcome everyone that's, that's watching this morning around the world. But, but I also want you to go ahead and, and grab your tablets, your, your uh, Bibles, and, and turn with us this morning 
uh, to the second book in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. Amen. Um, and we're going we're gonna to jump in. We're going to move this morning from the transcendence of God to the phenomenon of phenomenon. God. The, the phenomenon. You got to find that. That's right. Well, it's, 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 it's experiencing the supernatural presence of God that, that, that he, that he use, utilizes nature to reveal himself. Mm. And, and this is how he's going to reveal himself in a burning bush experience Amen. with Moses. Okay, the so phenomenon let's go, of God. The phenomenon Type of God. Type that down in your, let, uh, your chat. It's like phenomenon it, God. If it, you don't know how to spell it, Google it real quick and then type it down in the chat. We're going to go from the, the transcendence of God to the phenomenon of God. That's Amen. right. Amen. So Exodus chapter 3, um, and I'm reading from the New King James Version in Exodus 3 beginning in verse 1. Now Moses... Now Moses was tending the flock. Moses is one of the most well-known men in all of the Bible. Right, that's I'm, my, I call him my man Moshe. Moshe. Yes, okay, my man Moshe. Moshe. Okay, yes. Moshe. Yes. Um, now Moshe was tending the flock of De Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord, now this is known as a theophany. Mm -hmm. This is a theophany. This is literally the presence of God. All right, okay? so, so explain to the people uh, that... Theophany, know, theophany literally is. means theos, meaning God, mm -hmm. and appearance. Yes. So God is appearing. He's, he mm. appeared throughout the God Old Testament. is appearing. He is appearing. And this is, this is big it's because in, in the, the old text, uh, nobody really has seen God. That's right. right. So the, the sight right. of God... Uh, the, for God to virtually appear to man was something significant because at that point, man was still looked at as unclean. That's right. That's okay, right. So. And so the angel of the Lord, um, in this word Lord, it literally means Yahweh. Yahweh. So this is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And then Moses said... I will now turn aside and set this great, see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord God saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the burning bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And then he said, do, you not, draw, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Mm. Now, moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon the Lord God. And the Lord said, I've surely seen, his, I've surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry before their taskmasters, taskmasters but for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of, e of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppress oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to Yahweh, mm -hmm. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And so he said, I will certainly be with you. Go to Pharaoh, that I should bring them to the children of Israel. And I certainly will be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent to you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What is his name? Mm -hmm. What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Mm, mm. That's the, powerful. The struggle, Jamal, in, in modern day Christianity mm -hmm. is that we know God, 
but do we know Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, yeah. we know God as a force. We, we know God um, as, a, uh, as gravity, as lightning, as a, as, as a supernatural um, force in, in nature. But that God that we, that we want, to, want to emulate and, and worship is a God who's impersonal. Mm -hmm. Impersonal. And he's also amoral. A okay, so he's impersonal and he's amoral. Define amoral, please. It, it means that um, basically what might be right for you might be necessarily might not be right for me. In other words, th there is no moral compass. I'm not mm -hmm. going to be held accountable for, for any, anything that I might do that might be wrong. Relativism. That's right. It's mm -hmm. relativism. And, and so as a result of it, um, I, I don't, I have an impersonal God who can, mm -hmm. who, who doesn't, who's, who's faceless. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's the kind of God that I want because he's not going to hold me accountable mm. to anything that I've done wrong. Mm. So he's more palatable. That's right. And, and so what I must do then is I must find myself, my true self, and then I'll find this this force, this, this God that's out there. Well, you, you said a lot because, first of all, uh, the, the fact that we are in the living in a society that uh, the, the desire to be held accountable is at its lowest right now. That's right. Right? That's and this, right. This, this is all age demographics. Right. Right? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't just say it's the millennials, the Gen Zs. It's all demographics, right? Because if the oldest individuals can uh, imbibe that spirit, that's where they are, right? Uh, so you said something powerful because, you know, and I realized that back in the days, uh, and this is maybe five, ten years ago. Everybody was, you know, talking about only God can judge, right? That was a big statement. That's right. Right, but then when you picture this God that you express, right, the personal God, impersonal God, right, amoral God, and only He can judge, then that means I set the tone, right, and I set the the the, the whole standard at right. which my judging happens. Because I get God on my terms. Yes. Mm. See, I get, I get God on my terms. You can't get God on your terms. That's right. So, but, but this type God. That, right, real quick, I'm sorry. Type that in the chat. They got to type that. Can't get God on your terms. That's, That's powerful. Right. That's right. That's a powerful statement. Well, and, 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 and here's the thing, Jamal. It's, it's like um, I, I work with the University of Tennessee basketball team. Mm -hmm. I've got to give them a shout out. They beat <laughs> LSU last night, an incredible game at home. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just honored to work with that team. And, um, but when you hear coaches, when you hear coaches respond when they, when they have a loss, mm -hmm. often they'll say, listen, we had a bad game, but we're looking towards the future. We're mm -hmm. looking towards the next game. And they'll say simply this, it is what it is. Mm, that's scary. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the American God that we have today. It is what it is. Mm. It is what it is. You know, it just is what it is. Yeah. You know? And, and so we, it, our, the God that we have in America today is a God that's impersonal. Mm -hmm. it's, he's amor or he amoral. or she is amoral. <laughs> it's, it, and, and it doesn't have a, there's no face, it's faceless. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, and that's crept into the church today. I mean, we, we literally, ha we're literally have, we have God on our own terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't know the, Yah the God Yahweh. And you, you, Jehovah. And I know you're, you're, you're talking to a lot mm -hmm. of individuals. Yes. And this message is not to condemn you because maybe you might have been looking at God in this way, where, you know, I, I, in, on my own terms. Or maybe you were looking at God setting uh, boundaries on how much, how, how transparent you become in front of God. You know, maybe you might, you know, you might be wrestling with uh, what Rev is saying, but the, the reality is it is what it is. It's not something or somewhere we should live. They said, when you talk to a person who says it is what it is, that means they're at the, they're at the lowest point where they don't care anymore. The level of care That's is right. so low That's right. when you say it is what it is, because that means there's no other options. Right. 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 And, and and that's what you know Moses is looking at like you know okay Lord what's the option there's no option right now and God is talking about okay no there's an option in this text and and here's where I want to I want to take it from a different slant because this morning it's not trying to find myself then I find God mm -hmm. but it's it's what I think John Calvin has said I I find my true self when I find out who God is mm. when I find out literally who God is.
But you, you, you said true self, my, my identity. So there's my a significance, true but true, because that word true is That's significant. That's right, it is. It's very true. And, and the reality is, is it, my real self, I find mm -hmm. when I understand who God mm. is. Who God is. That's powerful. Well, and, and look at it's it's all right here. I mean, uh, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro. Mm -hmm. Now we have to understand the context here. Moses spent forty years of his life as the prince of Egypt, so he grew up thinking that he was Egyptian, but in in fact he was Hebrew. Um, and and so the reality is is that um, he grew up. He find, found finds out that he's Hebrew. And all of a sudden, he, um, uh, Egyptian officer, is um, uh, um, hurting a, a Hebrew slave, and he, he murders the, the Egyptian officer, and then he's on, a, on, he runs for his life. So he spends the first 40 years as the prince of Egypt, and then the next 40 years on the backside of the desert as a shepherd. Talking about an identity crisis. Big time identity <laughs> crisis. I mean, he was really trying to find himself. Yes. yes. And, and, he's tr and he's still trying to find himself. Mm -hmm. This is a passage for us today. Yes. This is a passage for me. This is a passage for you. This passage is for us because Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Uh, the, the, and, and the priests of Midian, they, they, they were polytheistic. In other mm -hmm. words, they worshiped many, many gods. And um, he led this flock from the backside of the desert, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God, and all of a sudden an angel of the Lord appears to him in a burning bush. <laughs> now the reality is, is that there were, burning, there were burning bushes all the time because it was so arid. I mean, lightning would strike a bush, and within 10 seconds, that bush would be consumed. So seeing the burning bush, it, it was not normal. It, it, I mean, it was a norm. It was a norm. I mm -hmm. mean, there, 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 were, there were brush fires out there, and, and, and it was, you know, not um, unexpected to mm -hmm. see um, a, a bush on fire. But the, but the unexpected was that, um, that the bush w was not consumed. The bush continued to burn. So number one, the bush did not was not consumed. It continued right. to burn. It continued to burn. Right, so and there was no fuel for it. No. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the, the, you know, the, the bush had some fuel coming to it. Mm -hmm. The bush was on fire. And then the, uh, then the obvious is the bush begins to speak. So number one, the bush is on fire, not knowing how it was it sustainable. That's right. And, number, and then number two, the bush began to speak. That's right. Okay. The bush <laughs> begins to speak mm -hmm. and it gets his attention. It gets Moses' attention. Because he uses, the, you know, as God always does, he's a very personal God. Mm -hmm. He's a very personal God. And he says, Moses, Moses. Mm -hmm. now, now, that's going to get your attention. Yes. Right? It's going to yep. get your attention. And all of a sudden, um, he hears his name. And, um, and all of a sudden, um, you know, um, in the burning bush in verse 4, he says, so when the Lord saw, he turned aside to the Lord. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And, and what does Moses say? Here am I. Yep. Here am I. Here am I. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, um, and then God says, Yahweh says this, draw near. Do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where, you're, where you stand is holy. Mm is holy ground. You see, there's, there's something about the holiness of God, the holiness of God that, that I believe is, is, is happening in my own heart in this new year that, that I really believe, I, I long to, to live in Quorum Deo. Mm, okay. um, it's two Latin words that literally mean living before the face of God. Quorum Deo. Quorum Deo. Two Latin words. Living before the face of God. Living in the presence of God. Mm. You know, um, and, and, and I think that as I, as I look at my life, Christian Cultural Center, I, I see that an encounter with God can not only change the direction of your heart, but it can also rearrange, rearrange the priorities, mm. rearrange those priorities in our lives because God wants to take us from the backside of the desert 
so he can bring us to the front side of his heart. Mm, to the powerful. front side of his heart. Backside of the desert to the front side of his heart. So God uses the backside of the deserts. Mm -hmm. those, those are times of preparation. Those are times where we, where we, we go through the refiner's fire. Mm. The, the, the refiner's fire. And listen, I'm, I'm constantly going through that refiner's fire, and I'm longing to get into the very presence of Yahweh, mm. the, the God who is relentlessly pursuing me with his holiness and with his righteousness and yet, and yet calling me out from the backside of the desert of my own journey to, I, to get to the front side of his heart. That's, that's, it's just powerful to look at the, this, this all-powerful being. Yes. Pursuing you. Pursuing, pursuing me. Yes. Pursuing you that's watching. He desires a, a, a relationship. He desires a a, a, not just a basic relationship, but an intimate relationship. Because this, if you look into the, into the Greek, um, the word ego aime um, literally means the God who makes things happen now. Mm. He's the God who makes things happen now. When you, when you look at this great God, mm -hmm. when you understand who this God is that loves us, and redeems yes. us and reconciles us and forgives us. He is the God who makes things happen now. He is the Lord of the past, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we discover this God, this, this, the Yahweh, the God Yahweh, we, we discover him in all of his greatness, in all of his majesty, in all of his transcendence, so that we can experience him on a daily basis, personally in our lives. You, you dropped a couple of uh, some serious nuggets here, uh, you know, looking at the fact that it is not us trying to find ourselves, then find God, and when we find God, then we find our true selves. That's right. Right? That's right. And then That's God, right. you know, God doesn't want us on the, he will hit, you know, we go from the back back side of, the, of desert. the desert to yeah. the front side of his heart. That's right. The right? front side of his heart. And you know what, Jamal? That's where I want to stay. Mm. I, I just, I just want, I just want to stay there. And, and I, and as, as I, as I grow older <laughs> in my own life, I, I just celebrated a birthday right after yours. Yes. But mine's a, Mine was a little bit more significant in my, in my own journey. I, I look at in my own, my own heart right now, and, and we're in 21 days of prayer at New Life Gathering. Um, and in and, and this journey that I see my life on, I want to live in Quorum Deo, in the very presence of God, before the very face of God. Why? Because I want to be transformed mm. in his glory. I long to be in his presence. A.W. Tozer, um, who um, is a favorite author of mine, was speaking at, a, at a, an assembly. And um, the, the, the time for his, for his um, uh, slot came available, and, and they, they looked around, and, and Pastor Tozer wasn't even in the, in the auditorium. He wasn't even in the audience. And so they had to ask somebody else to preach that evening. And so um, when they found um, uh, Pastor Tozer, he was in his room, and he was fine. He was, he was absolutely fine. And they asked him, they said, Pastor, why, why didn't you, why didn't you, you knew you were preaching tonight. You, you missed it. Are you okay? Are you feeling all right? He said, no, I had a more important appointment. Mm. And later they found out that that important appointment began at noon that day in the very presence of God. And he was in his prayer closet praying, mm. praying in the, in the midst of God. He said, I had a more pressing appointment, mm. a more pressing appointment to be with Yahweh, to be in the very presence of God. When was the last time, Jamal, when was the last time as pastors that we were ever caught up in the very presence of Yahweh? Wow. Of Yahweh God. Um, I long to be in his presence. Yeah, that, long that, to be in his presence. I was a smack in my face. 
Because you know, that's a great question. You know, you know, I long to be in his presence, but so quickly we look at, as a minister, that if we're called to preach, that's where we need to be. That's right. And it's difficult to, to look at it and say, well, okay, no, I'll miss this out because I need to be in the presence of God. You know, and we, look, we, we don't look at the significance of that, even as ministers, mm. let alone individuals. And, and some of you watching here have, have know that you have a, a, an appointment with the presence of God. And you've been running from it and you've been fighting it because of whatever you're going through, you know, but you, it's, it's time for you to surrender and submit to that very appointment that God wants to have with you. You know, we, we read about it in, in, in Deuteronomy. For the Lord our God is a consuming, is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. John, in, in his vision on the Isle of Patmos, gives a beautiful description of the resurrection of Jesus. His, his countenance was like the sun shining in strength. His voice is the sound of many waters. His hair was as white as wool and his eyes like a flame of fire. John the Baptist, when spoke about Jesus and his sending of the Holy Spirit, said he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When you get around the Godhead, Jamal, mm -hmm. you know this. When you get around yes. the Godhead, you feel it's fire. Mm -hmm. You feel it's fire. Fire is an emblem yes. of all three. It's a sign of his coming. And when that fire comes, the fire of God literally consumes us and refines us. But let me just say to those of us that are still struggling mm -hmm. with this impersonal God who's a force, let me just tell you that I want to I want to encourage you this morning to come to Yahweh this morning. Yes. He is a personal God because in this in this particular chapter God tells Moses, I have seen the oppression mm -hmm. of my people. I have heard their cries, and I am going to be their deliverer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to respond to them. I'm going to deliver them out of the darkness into the light. I, I am setting my plan in motion. It started in Exodus 3. It's fulfilled in the promise of Jesus going mm -hmm. to the cross yes. to take away our sins. Mm -hmm. That plan of redemption was being set in motion in Exodus 3 in this burning bush experience. I'm telling you, our God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. Consuming fire. Oh. You know, that consumes us and refines us. Yes. For his good. That's great. You know. That's, that's good. The uh, presence of God has a power to change the trajectory of your heart. That's right. The presence of God has the power to refine you. The power of God has the, 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 the ability to consume, a fire that consumes, right? And we're looking at what, what does it consume? The hurts, the pains, the identity crisis, the self-esteem is consuming that. The, the fears. Yes, the fears. The fears. Yes. The, 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 the shame. Yes. The shame mm -hmm. in, in, our own, in our own hearts. Look at Moses. Right. And, and, this, cons and this, this fire literally changed the direction of his life and also the devotion of his heart. Mm. Because guess what? Guess what? Mm. Moses didn't think that he could go back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. He didn't think he had murdered someone. He, he, and, and plus, he said, I stutter. I yes. stutter. Yep. I mean, you're going to use me, God? He, I, I stutter. And, and he, didn't yeah. think, he didn't think he could go back. Mm -hmm. And God says, I have an assignment for yes. you, Moses. Just like he has his assignment for us. Amen. And God gave Moses an assignment that was supernatural. That God said, and this is the amazing thing. And guess what, Moses? Pharaoh might say no when you go back. But guess what? I'm going to be with you mm -hmm. because yes. I want you to take a rod with you yes. that you're going to know that, that the <laughs> staff is going to be with yes. you. It's going to be just a sign and a symbol of my presence from this fire. That's great. You know, that's great. I, I mean, the, the re reality is, is that our God is a consuming fire mm -hmm. to consume the shame and the fear and the anxieties of our hearts. But then it's also a refining fire. Mm -hmm. Jamal, in Malachi 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, He will come like a refiner's fire. Mm. A, a refiner's fire is a fire that refines. 
So, so God says that he is a refiner and that his presence, his presence is like, a, is like that fire that refines. But what, what literally does, does that mean? Mm. Well, the word refiner today is, is not a common word. And no. a lot of people uh, would not be able to describe it because that job is not as common today as it was in biblical times. But let me just share with you, a refiner in biblical times was a person who basically took a piece of metal that was formless and impure, and then he would put the metal into the furnace, and then he would heat it up to an, an intense heat until all the dross and impurities came to the surface, and then he would wipe them off. And then he would do this again and again up to almost seven times. He would go through the same process until the metal was, listen to this, clean and pure. But the way that he would know, listen to this, Jamal, the way that he would know that the metal was pure was once he looked at it, he could see his reflection of his face Ooh, in the metal. Oh, that's powerful. In the metal. That's powerful. <laughs> and this is the beautiful yes. picture. Yes. This is the beautiful picture mm -hmm. of the refining God who wants to do more in our lives, yes. not less. Yes. He wants to do yes. more of that refining yes. in our lives, mm -hmm. not less. God wants to work in and through our lives, not less. Yes. He, he wants to do more for us. He, he doesn't want to leave us the way that we are. And he'll chase us after, even after we're running away from him, God will chase us down in the backside of the desert to get us to the front place of his heart. God wants to do that in our lives. He won't leave us the way we are. He'll chase after us until we change. He wants our attitudes. He wants our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. He wants our hidden sins. He wants our disillusionments that hold us back. He wants any of our fear, our condemnation. And he wants it all to go through the furnace of his presence so that all the dross in our hearts may literally rise to the surface. Mm -hmm. For one reason and one reason alone, so that the reflection of Christ, yes, the reflection of Christ may be seen in everything we are, in everything we do. That's powerful. Not, not the reflection of the world. Yeah. Not yeah. the reflection of myself. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But the reflection of Jesus. Yes. The reflection of Jesus Christ. We all need a burning bush experience. Yes. <laughs> we all need a burning bush experience, Jamal. Yeah. We all need a burning bush experience. And as you're saying that, I'm, 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 you know, I try to be sensitive and, you know, just if you're on this and you're watching, stop fighting your refining process. Some of you might not want it, don't want the heat, right? Some of them, you know, somebody's watching and saying, okay, that's too hot. That's right. Right? That's right. But, but the, the heat has to be turned up to get the impurities out. Don't fight your refining process. Don't fight it. No. There is therefore now no condemnation yes. for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's time for us, church, to experience Yahweh. Yahweh. Yes. Yep. Wow, Rev. Mm. You want to you pray for the people? I would love to. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your presence that's not only in this sanctuary, but in the sanctuaries of our homes, of our offices, of our cars. I thank you, Father God, that you have drawn once again to your people because of your word, your written word, and your spoken word. And so I thank you. I thank you, Father, for the fire the refiner's fire that we go through 24 hours a day, seven days a week so that we can draw closer to Yahweh who said, I will be with you. And yet he even goes through the fire with you. Amen. So I pray, Father God, for your anointing upon those who are watching this morning. And I pray, Lord Jesus, 
that you would do a new work on the inside out of each of their hearts and their lives. And thank you, Father God, for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Yes, Lord. For giving us a second chance on this Lord's Day to experience the all-consuming fire of God's presence in our hearts and in our lives. Father God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us just one more day to experience the presence of our living God and all in all of God's children said amen amen amen, amen. quorum deo quorum deo quorum deo Cor well as you're saying amen I want you to type in the chat mm. and what you're going to type is I'm not going to fight the refining process anymore yes come on we're going to support one another we're going to hold you accountable we're going to support you in your journey and your process but um, we have a minister that's waiting to pray for those individuals do that, that do not have a relationship with Christ, that do not know what it is to be a part of the body of believers. She's going to take you through this quick process so you can join the body of believers. Elder Beverly, thank you. God bless you. I'm certain you've heard something this morning that has touched your heart, that has caused you to know that you are not alone in this journey. You may have been dealing with an identity crisis, but as Pastor Scott Jackson has said this morning, God is bringing you from the backside of the desert into his presence right now in his face and if you've heard that for the first time in your life that you are loved that you are somebody I want you to repeat these words after me dear Jesus I accept you today as my Lord as my Savior as my healer and as my deliverer I denounce my plan and my provisions for my life and I accept your plans and your provision from this day forward. I call you Lord and Savior of my life. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, you are now a child of God and God wants you to know you will never walk another day alone. For he will always walk with you, talk with you, and carry you through the turbulence that life will present you. So we want to put some materials into your hand. And there is numbers text on our screen. You can text or phone the number in. So we can follow up with you on your spiritual journey. God bless you and welcome to the family of God. Amen and welcome, welcome, welcome to the body of believers. And as I always say, this journey is not an easy journey. I'm, I want to prepare you, but thank God it is possible, right? So with the God that we serve, we look at the possibilities to this God we serve. Difficulties are going to be is a part of life, period. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what we choose, if we want to be good at it, it's going to take some difficult times. But I'm telling you right now, you're not alone. That's right. You're not alone. Reach out. If you call CCC now your home, reach out. We're here to walk this journey with you. God bless and welcome, welcome, welcome. Rev. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because my question is, you know, when, 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 not only does Jesus want to see his face, that's right. Right? As, as, as we refine. But what are the people seeing That's right. when they see us? That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Right? So are we, right. are we a true reflection? Mm. Right? Are we still dealing with impurities? Are we dealing with certain things? Because you said a, a, a refiner takes a metal that it has no shape and is impure. And it shapes it and cleans it up. That's a powerful statement. We become the tools in God's hands that reflect That's right. the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Good stuff. From the back 
from the back desert. side of the desert to, to the, the front side, side of his heart. Yes, amen, amen. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're excited uh, that you are participating in a part of our Sunday experience. Keep, please keep Pastor Bernard in your prayers. Please keep Reverend Jackson in your prayers as we go and be used by God. That's right. To help change some lives. Because if we're not changing some lives, then what are we doing? That's right. Right? That's, and I love it. There's a, a quote. I don't know who said it. He said, what's the worth of Christianity if it doesn't change your character? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're in character development. We are. We are. Being used by God. Yahweh. Yahweh. The God who makes things happen the now. The God who makes things happen now. <laughs> Amen. So Lord, right now we pray now yes. to make things mm -hmm. happen now. Some of us are watching this. We need some things happening now. We need some, you, you to talk to a person that we had a job interview with right now, Lord. Lord, we wanted you to talk to a spouse that we're wrestling with right now, Lord. We wanted you to talk to a child that we're having issues with right now. We need the God of right now. Some of us are at our wits end. We're at our end. And we need a God that speaks to what's happening now. So, Lord, we ask and we give you permission to intercede, a divine intervention. We pray for, uh, for, for this week that you'll constantly remind us that you're the refiner. And the heat is for a good reason. And Lord, we ask that you continue just blessing us, empowering us to succeed throughout this week as we ponder on this message, as we stay in step with the Spirit so that we can stay in line and be in the presence of you, Lord. Because outside of your presence, is a horrible place to be. Mm. So, Lord, we ask that you anoint us, mm. and we say thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. But, Lord, we stand in expectation for what you're about to do. Yes. So we walk into this week excited yes. and ready and for you to have your way. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. and amen. 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 As we leave this place with never God's presence, Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord, Lord, period. We believe it, we proclaim it, and we're seeing it come to pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week.